So Nick Boza had himself an absolute monster of a game on Monday Night Football against the Cleveland Browns. I mean, he was just dynamic and really showed why the San Francisco 49ers used the number two overall pick on him and why some people, including myself, were saying that the Cardinals should have used the number one pick on him. I knew he was going to be great. I thought this guy had the chance to be a defensive player of the year when he was drafted. I didn't expect him to be so good this early on. I thought it was going to take him a little bit of time to develop. He's honestly just been playing at a high level from the start. He had an okay stretch his first three weeks, and that was actually, I was pleasantly surprised by that. So for him to come out and really just dominate a game, which only an edge rusher or quarterback can really do, it was really just impressive, and I really was just having fun watching him play. I also love the flag plant, you know? I love when uh, guys get creative like that. Uh, th I, think, I just think that's fun, you know? I like when Baker Mayfield does his antics. I like when Nick Boza does his antics. I think that makes the sport more fun. It's kind of turned into a fun, obscure rivalry between the Browns and the 49ers. Unfortunately, they're in different conferences. They won't play each other too much, but it would have been fun if they were in the same conference and would play each other a bit. But anyways, let's just jump into some of the X's and O's, and you know what? Let's start things off with his run-stopping ability. We'll get to his pass rush in a second. His pass rush was awesome, but I really did think he did a very good job of just, just straight up stopping the run. Like, we'll start things off with this play. That's the blocking concept that Cleveland is going to be running, so there's a couple of double teams in the middle of the field, but really what's going to be key here is look at who's in charge of blocking Boza. It's a tight end, which is actually something that Cleveland did a decent amount throughout this game, and it was definitely regrettable in hindsight. Boza really made them pay for using a tight end to block him one-on-one -on, -one on several plays, and this one was one of them. This is basically going to be a run straight up the middle. Since the ball is getting snapped on the right hash marks, it's going to stay at about the right hash marks. But watch how far Boza is going to push a tight end who's in charge of blocking him over towards that direction, over to where he could potentially make a play. I mean, talk about moving somebody back. He completely moves him over to the right side of the screen. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but keep in mind, they started right there. One of the main reasons why it's just a tight end was going up on him one-on-one -on -one was simply because it's going to be a run up the middle. You don't have to worry about the edge rusher on the left side of the screen as much, but you do when that edge rusher is Nick Boza, one of the best young edge rushers in the league already. Bose is then able to reach out and help make that tackle. I mean, there were like eight guys who helped make the tackle. He did officially get credit for a tackle, but you could have given that to like the entire 49ers team on that one. But he still did a good job on that play, which is why I showed it. There was also this next play where there's actually going to be two key blocks you're going to want to take a look at. One is the tight end going up against Boza, who's on the edge, and also there's going to be a receiver going up against a safety. That receiver is Landry, who's going to be going up against number 29 Tart there, so that's the matchup. Those are really the two matchups you're going to want to take a look at here. Because watch how both of them are just going to easily win their matchups. I mean, Bose is the guy who obviously I'm making this video about, but... He did get some help on this one, however, just look at how he just owns his one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's off it at this point, so essentially, if Chubb tries to break things to the outside, it'd be a terrible decision. If you're Chubb, you just have to run, you know, put your head down, run straight up the middle, you know, try to gain a yard or two. However, he's going to try to bounce to the outside anyways, and it is definitely regrettable. Boza completely pounces on him and makes a great tackle. I mean, that's just one of those where you say, thank you very much. Use a tight end on me so I'm able to win my matchup easily, and then the halfback doesn't fully realize it. You're able to pounce out and get a huge tackle for a loss. I mean, that's just one of those that's almost too easy for Boza. It kind of seemed like Cleveland really had the mindset of, let's not worry about Boza too much throughout this game. Let's kind of make sure we're focused on their other great defensive linemen, because that's the thing about the 49ers. They have a lot of good defensive linemen. But that's the value in having many guys, is that you can't double-team everybody. Some guys are going to have to have one-on-one -on -one matchups, and when Boza has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Like, this one's another one. This one's now a pass rush play. We've gotten off the run-stopping plays, and what's going to happen is that Boza's going up one-on-one -on -one against Demetrius Harris right there. And if you're Demetrius Harris, I mean, the reality is, Monday night was just a rough night to be a tight end for the Cleveland Browns. That's just kind of tough. But anyways, so for Boza, he doesn't know exactly how this is going to work. He doesn't know if it's going to be a running play or a passing play. He's going to have to try and figure out what's going on as quickly as the ball is snapped. And so he takes a couple of steps down just to make sure it's not a running play, but at this point, he knows it is going to be a passing play. And also at this point, there's nothing you can do if you're Cleveland. I mean, you see Demetrius Harris there. He's, he's holding Boza at this point. This is a hold. He's kind of just doing it a little bit so he can get away with it, but... It is technically a hold, because there's no way you're going to be able to block Boza one-on-one -on -one for your tight end. You're just not. Boza is able to run over and create some pressure. Baker has to make an off-balance throw, and it gets intercepted by Richard Sherman. It was a head-scratcher by Cleveland. They had quite a few of those, but again, what do good players do? They take advantage of their opportunities, and that's what Nick Boza did. And also, it should be mentioned that Boza hadn't had a game quite like this so far in the NFL season. He played pretty well in his first three games, but this was a breakout performance. 
This next play was actually another pretty interesting one. This time, Boza, he's lined up in the six technique right here, but here's what he's going to do. He's just going to try to run in between the left guard and left tackle. That's his whole job on this play, because if he does, this means that the left guard will have to move to the right side of the screen or to the guard's left side. And then D Ford, who was a very fast guy, could simply just run just right around him and get a straight shot to Baker Mayfield. That's the way this play is supposed to work. So for Boza, this is just the one where you try to set something up for your teammate. That's all you're doing here. And after this ball is snapped, it's working out perfectly. I mean, if you look, that guard is totally moving over to trying to make sure that he's blocking Boza on this one. So Boza, already great job. No matter what, when you watch this play, you have to say, hey, good work there, Boza. You did your part. But one really fascinating thing that's going to happen with the Browns' left tackle right here, he's going to realize what's going on and try to actually just keep pace with Ford. He's going to try to run through the left side of the screen. However, he's going to actually lack a little bit of spatial awareness here, and he's going to run into Boza, which results in Boza and the guard falling down, and then basically just Boza being right into where Baker Mayfield is. So Boza didn't actually knock over that left guard. That was more of just a falling down situation by the left tackle, not really paying attention there. But at the same time, Boza did a great job of setting up on that play, and when you do a good job of setting up that play, just good things tend to happen. He got a little bit lucky there with Cleveland's offensive line being a tad clumsy, but at the same time, it was still a tremendous play, and he got a sack out of it. Really, Boza did a good job of taking advantage of his opportunities all night, and this play is another example of that, where there is going to be a tight end on this play, however, he's going to just run out, he's running around on this one, so you don't have to worry about him too much. Instead, it will be a left tackle who's in charge of blocking Boza, but take a look at what happens right when this ball is snapped. Boza honestly doesn't even really do much of a move on this one. He just runs up and tries to generate some contact, which oftentimes I don't love, especially with a young player. However, take a look at what he's going to do right here. Really what I mean is take a look at his left arm. Watch how his left arm is kind of on the outside right here, but watch how he's going to move that. Watch how he's going to move it to the inside. At this point, it's just a balance thing. It's tough to continue this block when he Bozo was able to move his left arm like that. Now Bozo's center of balance is still just right down the middle. Whereas, I mean, look at how lopsided that offensive lineman is. You can't push him too much more. And Bozo did get a little bit lucky that Baker Mayfield took so long to throw. But Bozo lays an absolute hit on Baker Mayfield. He got the ball out and even recovered it. It's just a little thing, just that little twist of moving his arm to the inside and then having the strength and also the footwork to get away with it. I thought that was I thought that was pretty impressive in my opinion. And I also just like the hustle of, okay, this play took a little bit longer to work than typically you would like. It wasn't just utter domination, but at the same time, just keep working because you never know how long the play is going to last. And there's actually no better example of him just keeping working than this play. Once again, he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against the left tackle, but he's going to try something a little bit different this time. Not at first. I mean, if you look right when the ball is snapped, he's doing what you would typically expect him to do, running to the outside, running to the left side of the screen. However, he's just going to fake it out. He's going to try and see if he can cut to the inside, try to get to the inside of the tackle, and see if he can get the Baker Mayfield that way. And it's going to work out pretty well. I mean, as you see, he absolutely has the leverage to get around that tackle, so pretty good play up until this point from Boza. This is something he did a lot of times in college, and it makes sense because he is pretty good at it. It actually was kind of a concern of mine. He did this a little bit too often, I felt like, in college, and would sometimes result in him giving up containment. But, I mean, not to take an unfair shot at Baker Mayfield, but let's be honest. This guy runs a lot more to the right than he does to the left, so maybe that has something to do with why Boza is doing it. However, Cleveland is clearly prepared for it. If you look at their guard 75 right there, he's actually going to be ready to make sure that he doesn't allow Boza to get to the inside. He lays a pretty good hit on Boza and causes Boza to fall down. But watch Boza's hustle. Watch how he gets up and eventually jumps on a loose football. How many guys in this league, after getting hit like that, would just fall over and say, okay, play over? Not Boza. I mean, he wants to play. He wants to compete and he wants to win. And he did a really good job of helping his team win. So yeah, that's what I thought of Boza's performance. He was awesome. I mean, you guys all saw it. He was just a lot of fun to watch. So yeah, I thought Nick Boza was absolutely awesome against the Browns. And so much so, he actually won NFC Defensive Player of the Week. So hey, give him a lot of credit. He played very well. The 49ers are now 4-0. I mean, I think it's officially fair to say the 49ers are back. And that's a good thing for football. Because there's nothing quite like a sellout crowd in San Francisco. It's just an awesome place to watch football. So yeah, that's what I thought of Nick Bosa's performance. I thought he was fantastic. I thought the entire San Francisco's team was fantastic. I just, I had to pick out one guy. I figured, why not Bosa? So yeah, that's the thought of their team and their performance. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.